Mr. Van Zell, uh, Moderna recently paid NIH $400 million. Do you believe it creates a conflict of interest for the government employees who are making money now off of the vaccine to also be dictating the policy about how many times we have to take the vaccine? Good morning, Senator. Uh, indeed, we recently made, a, before Christmas last year, a $400 million payment to the NIH for uh, an old patent that they had developed, not related to COVID, but useful in the development of a COVID vaccine uh, to, to pay them for their work. Uh, it's for the U.S. government to assess how that money should be Do you think it creates a conflict of interest for the same people deciding the policy of how often we have to take the vaccine to also be making money the more times we take the vaccine? Yes or no? This is for the government to decide. Senator. You have no opinion on whether or not it creates a conflict of interest. Is there a higher interest or a higher incidence of myocarditis among adolescent males 16 to 24 after taking your vaccine? So thank you for the question, Senator. First, let me say we care deeply about safety and we're working closely to, with the CDC and the FDA to Pretty get... much a yes or no. Is there a higher incidence of myocarditis among boys 16 to 24 after they take your vaccine? The data I've shown actually, I've seen, sorry, from the CDC actually shown that there's less uh, myocarditis for people who get the vaccine versus who get COVID infection. You're, you're saying that for ages 16 to 24 among males who take the COVID vaccine, their risk of myocarditis is less than people who get the disease. That is my understanding. That sir. is not true. And I'd like to enter into the record six peer-reviewed papers from the Journal of Vaccine, the Annals of Medicine that say the complete opposite of what you say. I also spoke with your president just last week, and he readily acknowledged in private that, yes, there is an increased risk of myocarditis. The fact that you can't say it in public is quite disturbing. Do you think it's scientifically sound to mandate three vaccines for adolescent boys? This is for the public health leaders to decide. Senator. You've been advocating for it. You've been interviewed, and you've been advocating for boosters. Do you know when the myocarditis is most common among these adolescent boys after the second dose? When I spoke with your president, he readily acknowledged in private, yeah, that maybe there ought to be a discussion whether we ought to have one vaccine versus two versus three. If 90 percent of the myocarditis comes after the second dose, why don't we have a rational discussion about one? Marty McCary, a physician from Johns Hopkins, has said exactly the same thing. It's been discussed, and yet we have this ridiculous notion from the CDC. So the CDC says, and I'll ask you this question. Let's start it as a question. Your 16-year-old's had COVID. Your 16-year-old gets better and now has recovered from COVID. You vaccinate them, and they get myocarditis. Are you going to give them two more vaccines? Your child, give them two more vaccines? I'm not a clinician. I will have to discuss. You have children. I do. Have you vaccinated your children? I have. How many times? Three or four times. Three or four times. We so the this. CDC recommends this, and, you know, you're obviously someone who's self-interested in the outcome here. But the CDC says that if your 15, 16-year-old gets COVID, recovers, takes a vaccine and gets myocarditis, is hospitalized with elevated heart enzymes, and is very sick, the CDC says as soon as he gets better, vaccinate him again. You know how many American parents think that that's a rational, reasonable thing to do? Do you know how many countries don't do this for children? Uh, Sweden doesn't offer the vaccine for kids under 12 unless they're at risk for severe disease. And I agree with that. I'm not saying never on any of this. I think it's a very reasonable position to say kids at risk or have some diseases that there may be a reason for vaccinating some children. Finland doesn't recommend it for under 12 months. Norway also. England as well. France, Poland, Germany, Switzerland, and all vaccinate 12 and up. So we got half the world who have looked at these studies. There's a study in Israel of thousands of patients, and yet you sit here and act as if you've never heard of myocarditis, and you don't think it's an increased risk for young adolescent males, when all of the studies who isolate out people by age have found that, yes, there's an increased risk after taking your vaccine. Pfizer, too, but worse with Moderna. There's an increased risk, Senator. I was comparing it to somebody who gets COVID. Well, that's also not true either. But there's an increased risk of getting it. But even when they compare it to the disease, there are many papers out there who do, that do show that there's more of a risk of myocarditis after vaccination. So you have to weigh the risk and balances. 
And you are right, you're going to make less money because you're going to try, and they're already trying, the CDC's got it on their schedule. They're going to try to force all the kids in America to do this through school. But guess what? Parents aren't going to do it. They've seen that COVID is not deadly in children, and you're right. It's become less deadly over time. Your market's going down. So you aren't going to make as much money. I'm all for you making money in an honest way, but I don't like the idea that the people making the decisions in government are also receiving money and are now conflicted in their interest. Thank you, Senator Paul.